At its core, Autodesk Inventor is an assembly modeling software. It can create its own parts and does a great job. A common workflow used by people is to define parts in their own IPT files and link them into the assembly. However, Inventor offers advantages to creating parts in the context of the assembly. For example, to create a component, we'll call it Gasket, in the assembly, we can select the template and pick on the top face of the base. Now we can begin sketching. However, if we start a sketch on that top face, and project the geometry of the face, Autodesk Inventor will grab those edges and also turn on Adaptivity. What Adaptivity does is it allows Inventor to create components or modify components based on assembly constraints or based on any change to related edges or faces. So now that we have the sketch geometry, we can start the extrude tool and extrude our gasket a thickness. Any change made to the assembly will automatically update this gasket component. However, that's not the only function of adaptivity. If we return back to the assembly and start to constrain the lid, we can apply mate constraints. Made it to the top of the gasket and then apply flush constraints. This will align the two edges and the bottom face, but it's not addressing the fact that the lid is the wrong size. If we activate the lid, expand it, and go to the main extrusion, we can turn on Adaptivity. This will make the sketch flexible that defines the extrusion itself. So back in the assembly, we can resume applying assembly constraints. And connect the lid to the base and it will stretch that component. Adaptivity is a phenomenal tool for building quick assemblies and having things stretch into shape. However, every time you make a modification to a component, those adaptive relationships need to be evaluated. This is why it's possible to simply turn adaptivity off by right-clicking and deselecting adaptivity of a component in the assembly. This is especially useful in very large assemblies where multiple adaptive relationships can add time to updating the assembly. Let's see how this ends up working. Turn on the adaptive base, go to the extrusion, and turn on its visibility. Now let's reactivate the top level of the assembly and make a couple of changes. I'll use my priority to be able to get to the dimensions. And then let's update the assembly. When we do this, the adaptive case assembly will have some errors. We'll accept them. As we can see, some changes have not been updated. We can grab the part, move it around. And where I have relationships between the gasket and the lid, you'll see that it's maintaining those assembly constraints and causing failures. The assembly constraints between the base and the lid are also failing where they can't be generated. If I turn adaptivity back on, the whole assembly updates 
all of the parts are restored to their correct fit. And then if I'm done editing for a while, we can turn adaptivity off and get the maximum performance out of the assembly.